The makers of Postum, the favorite mealtime drink in millions of American homes, present your favorite radio friend, Slum and Abner. In Dickens' famous story, A Christmas Carol, remember the grouchy, mean-tempered old man, Mr. Scrooge? Well, even today, I think we run across a lot of people almost as bad-tempered as old Scrooge, don't you? And the pity of it is that most cranky people don't want to be that way. Usually, they're what doctors call nervous irritables, people who suffer from indigestion or headaches or can't sleep at night. Any one of those symptoms may mean that you have coffee nerves. For while many people can drink coffee without becoming jittery, many others cannot. If coffee nerves are making a nervous irritable of you, switch to Postum. For Postum contains no caffeine or stimulant of any kind. And it's as delicious as it is satisfying, with a cheering aroma and distinctive, mellow flavor that is Postum's own. For your convenience, it comes in two forms. Postum cereal, the drink you make by boiling or percolating, and instant Postum, mixed instantly in the cup. So, if coffee nerves upset your digestion, keep you awake, or make you feel headachy, switch to post them with your meals. See how you improve the first few days. See if you aren't less of a nervous irritable at the end of two weeks, and after you've given post them a full 30-day test, see if you're not again a cheerful, good-natured person. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. <laughs> Christmas time in Pine Ridge, and all business and other activities have been cast aside in preparation for celebrating the holiday. A heavy snow has fallen, and it is now after dark. Three old fellows, Lum, Abner, and Grandpappy Spears, are trudging through the snow on a real Christmas mission. Listen. Hey, you're sure we're headed right now, are you, Grandpap? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know this way all right. Uh, Doc Miller rode his horse over here. You see his tracks there in the snow. Oh, yeah, them his. Well, it must be the old Gaddis place then. Yeah, yeah, that's just about where it's at. But there ain't nothing but the barn left there now that the house burnt down two or three years ago. Well, Doc says it's due east from that road where we turned off there. Due east? Yeah, which way is east? I ain't paid no attention to the directions here. Wait a minute. Whereabouts is the East Star? There it is, right ahead of us. Yeah, we're going right, man. Don't worry about that. Yeah, we can just follow the East Star. Yeah, yeah, that ought to lead us to it, yeah. How did you find out about these folks, Grandpap? Well, Doc Miller and his woman had supper over at our place, and we were sitting there visiting after we got on eating, and... Directly that telephone rang and told Doc to get right on over here. Well, uh, who done the calling? Oh, some feller named Joe something or another. I forget what he did call his name. Uh-huh. He would went over to some neighbor's house to call. Said they'd been into the county seat to pay their taxes, and there weren't no room at the hotel, so they come on out here to this old barn to spend the night. Well, this ain't fitting weather to... Have to stay out in the barn, I'll say that. And they said they were sort of expecting the baby to be born tonight, huh? Yeah, that's the reason they called Doc Miller. Yeah, what's the matter, Abner? I dog is my arms getting tired here, fella. Well, here, here, let me carry them blankets Ooh. a while, and you carry this oil heater. He's plumb wore out. Is that box of groceries getting heavy, Grandpa? No, I'm all right, Lum. You ought to be there directly anyhow. Yeah, this snow tires a body out walking through it, you know it. Yeah, well, maybe we're walking a little fast for you, Abner. Yeah, slow down a little here, fella. Well, here, you take the lantern. Yeah, here, yeah, yeah, let me get hold of the thing. Yeah, that is it. Wait. Mighty thought of you fellas to come over here at night. I sort of hate to call you to get out at night like this. But after the doc left, me and the woman got to talking about how pitiful it was that that couple was having to stay out here in this barn 
Nothing to eat and all. Why, sure, sure. I'm just glad you called me, Grandpa. Just proud to have a chance to help. Yeah, this makes it seem more like Christmas to me, doing for somebody else. Why, sure, sure. <sighs> you know, you just can't do things to make other folks happy without making yourself happy at the same time. I've always said that. Trouble with a lot of us, we sort of lose the Christmas idea altogether. Think too much about ourselves. The real Christmas spirit is the uh, happiness we get out of making other folks happy. Well, yes, it is. Now, there we was, sitting there at home, busy rocking to what we was enjoying ourselves. These folks out here spending the night in the old barn this way. No, it just wouldn't have been no Christmas to it if you hadn't have called us up, Grandpappy, sure would Well, I, I know that I could depend on you, fella. Now, man, if it's the old Gaddis place, we ought to be able to see it from the top of this hill here. Wait a minute. I believe that's the barn yonder, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right where they're at, sure as the world. Well, now, yeah. that's uh, due east from where we was at, all right, for... There's the east star right over the top of the barn yonder. Yeah, there's uh, Doc's horse tied to the fence there, too. Yep, yeah, we can. Yep, yeah, we can. See the light shining through the cracks in the walls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure, now that's a shame that them folks never let some of us know they needed a place to stay. Why, we've got plenty of room over there at our place. Just been glad to have had them, glad to have them. Well, this fella that called Doc said they's looking for a place to stay and seen this barn weren't being used, so they just put up there for the night. Uh-huh. Whereabouts do they live, Grandpap, uh, did he say? Why, yeah, they're from over about Pleasant Valley, Summers, Abner. Pleasant Valley. Yeah, he, he told Doc he never had no cash money, taking every nickel he had to pay his taxes, but said if he'd make the call for him, why, he'd work it out quick as he could. Well, old Doc never refused a call in his life, I don't reckon. No, no. I've knowed him to get up in the dead of night in the worst kind of weather to go call on the sick. When he knowed for he went, he never would get no pay for it. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I don't know what we would do without old Doc here in this community. Oh, he's a pillar, he is. Well, I'll see some that says his methods is a little old-fashioned, but I uh, grannies, I'll take my chances with him every time. Well, he's pulled me through the shadows time and again. I've always said that Doc never practiced medicine for what money he got out of it. As much as he does for the good he can be to his fellow man, I've always said it. Well, sir, if there ever was a man that's got a preserved seed in a better world, it's it's old Doc Miller. Yes, he has. We better not be talking too loud, fellas. We don't want to disturb him now. No, no, no. Let's be as quiet as we can here, man. You gotta let Doc know we're here some way or other. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm worth a fresh. I'm too. I don't know whether I'm out of breath. I got too much. War to a fresh. I reckon it won't hurt nothing to tap on the door sort of general, will it? No, no. Go ahead, Lon. They might be needing this oil stove in there. I don't hear a sound in there. Well, I don't believe you knock quite loud enough, Lon. Maybe they never hear it. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here comes somebody to the door. Well, howdy, Doc. Oh, hello there. <laughs> well, what are you three old codgers doing out here this time of the night? Well, we, we just got to thinking after you left, Doc, uh, these folks might be needing something. Yeah, uh, Doc, we brought an oil stove and some bed covers. Yeah, and here's a box of groceries, too. Well, now, they can certainly use them. Having any heat of any kind in there, using what little hay was left in there for bed, piled it all up in the manger, and... Made a pretty good bed, but now these covers will come in very handy, man. Mm, good. How is the lady now? Oh, getting along as well as could be expected, Lom. Uh, here now, I'll take these things on in and have her husband light this heater and warm the place up a little. Uh, you men better stay out here for a little while. Oh, yeah, sure. Hey, you go ahead, Doc. We, we wait out here. If there's anything we can do, Doc, why, this horror. It's all right. Thank you, Grandpa. Uh, Doc, uh, just a minute. What kind of work does this fellow do? Oh, why, uh, he said a while ago that he was a carpenter by trade, Lom. Carpenter? Yes, I said he'd been out of work for quite a while, though. Hmm. Oh, well, here now, I better get back in. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
said he was a carpenter, huh? Yeah. I was just thinking, Abner. We've been talking about having a loading platform built there for the back door down to store. I think it'd be a pretty good idea to just hire this fellow to do a little fixing up around the store there for us. Why, well, yeah, uh, we, we was talking about putting some shelving across the back there, too. Yeah. Huh? Might just let him do that while he's at it. Well, he'll want to be nice wife and baby for a few days now, I reckon. Oh, sure, sure. Quick as Doc thinks it's safe for him to be moved, I'm going to insist on him coming right on over there at our place and staying. Well, now, that'd be the best place in the world for him, Grandpa. Aunt Charity could take better care of than anybody I know. Oh, my, yes, she get a sight of enjoyment out of looking after that baby, I know. <laughs> yes, love, children. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that woman here's grandpappy's mother, they were young and in the community, I reckon. <laughs> yes, sir, I was just thinking here, man. <laughs> sort of funny. Here we are, three old codgers, getting along in years, standing around out here waiting. Waiting for a little baby to be born. It's sort of like as if we was waiting for somebody to take our place. Yeah, well, of course, we... <laughs> don't like to talk about such things, but now we've about sorted our time, I reckon, man. Uh, won't be long before we'll have to move on. There'll be somebody else to take her place. Oh, yeah, dear yeah, Lord, me, they'll soon forget about us. It's, it's sort of like the years. Here, 1938, almost gone. There's been a lot of things happen, but it'll all soon be forgot. There's been lots of joys and happiness. Yeah. On the other hand, there's been lots of heartaches and lots of blasted hopes. But there's a new year coming, and we all get to start all over again. (laughs) Here come 1939, bringing new hope and new courage. And we're sort of like the years, us three old fellas. We're... Sort of like 1938, and we're waiting on 1939. Little, little baby in yonder. Yeah, well, it's just like I've always said. Now, wait a minute. I believe somebody's coming to the door now. Oh, maybe it's Doc. Maybe it's Doc. Any, any news yet, Doc? Well, men, it's a fine baby boy. Sincerely wish all of our friends a happy and joyous Christmas. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.